Let's take a look at figure sequences. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro using Animation Pro version 1.3. Your screens may look a little different. There's nothing quite as tedious as animating the same figure sequence over and over and over again. Well, maybe watching it. So Animation Pro 1.3 introduces figure sequences to make that sort of thing a whole lot easier. Let's take a look. Let's start with a really simple animation. As far as animations go, they don't get much simpler than this. The animation contains only one frame with a background image. Now, let's assume that I want to make a figure walk across the screen. I can certainly add the figure and then change it from frame to frame to achieve that. But as I mentioned before, that would be really tedious, especially if I've already animated the figure walking in another project. Well, assuming that I've done just that, I can use Animation Pro 1.3 to bring that sequence in. I'll start by pressing the plus button at the top of the animation screen to open the Add menu. This menu contains a new selection called Figure Sequence. I'll tap on it. Animation Pro will now ask me to select the project containing the required sequence. For the sake of this video, I have one called Walk Cycle, so I'll select that from the list. The next step is to select the sequence that I want to bring in from that animation. That requires me to select the range of frames that I want. In this case, I'll bring in all of them. It also requires me to select the figure that I want from those frames, so I'll select the man. Now, if I want to see a preview of what the sequence will look like, I can press the play button on the right hand side of the popover. Please note that Animation Pro will attempt to animate the selected figure minus any CPU intensive effects such as blurs based upon the frame rate currently selected in the active project. I say attempt because, depending upon the complexity of your figure, Animation Pro may not be able to achieve the desired frame rate. But it will give you a general idea. Anyway, you'll also notice that there's a bunch of switches below the play button. In this case, my active animation does not contain any figures, so my only choice will be to add the figure as a new figure, versus replacing an existing one. So several of the options don't apply, and have thus been disabled. I'll discuss these in more detail later in the tutorial. The last switch, however, allows me to specify whether I want to bring in any user tweens, that is, if user tweens happen to be part of the sequence that I'm selecting. Anyway, I'm happy with the default selections, so I'll press the green tick button to bring in the selected sequence. Animation Pro will now insert the selected sequence into the active animation, automatically adding frames if the animation isn't long enough. So now I have a single walk cycle in my new animation. But what if I want that figure to take another step? Well. I can select the last frame, select the figure, and then repeat the process. This time, because I selected a figure in my active animation, Animation Pro now assumes that I wish to replace it with a compatible figure from the Walk Cycle project. And there's a very important distinction here. Before, with the Add as New Figure switch turned on, the figure from the sequence was added as a new figure into my active animation. If I were to do that now, I'd end up with two figures in my active animation. If, however, I leave the switch off, Animation Pro will replace the figure in the last frame of my active animation with the figure from the first frame of the selected sequence, and then continue with that figure in subsequent frames. This means that I'll only end up with one figure in my active animation, and that figure will be the same figure. In other words, tweening will be preserved. Now, whenever a replacement is being performed, two more switches will be available. If you'd like the figure being inserted from the sequence to take on the initial position and size of the selected figure in the active animation, then leave the two switches turned on. Otherwise, turn one or more of them off based upon your requirements. That is, you might like to keep the size of the figure as set in the sequence. I'll leave the relative position switch turned on because I want the figure to continue walking from its current position. And there we have it. 
the figure is now taking two steps. If I want him to walk even further, I can make sure the figure is selected again in the last frame and then repeat the process. But for now, I should talk a little bit about clones. This time, I'll start with a simple animation that I prepared earlier. This animation contains 10 frames with multiple figures. In the first frame, there's a figure with two clones, one representing a shadow and the other a reflection. I'd like to make that figure walk across the screen. So, as before, I'll select the figure and then select Figure Sequence from the Add menu. And, as before, I'll select the Walk Cycle project, choose all of its frames, and select the figure. This time, however, I'd also like to make the figure's scale relative, as I want to preserve the size of the figure in my active animation. Let's now see what happens when I replace the figure with that from the sequence. As you can see, Animation Pro has automatically added the figure sequence into the existing frames, preserving the content already there. Furthermore, it's also preserved the figure's shadow and its reflection. OK, so that was a quick overview of figure sequences. Before I finish though, there's a few gotchas that I should mention. 1. Pay attention to the title of the popover when you're selecting a sequence. It's quite easy to add a figure as a new figure by mistake if you forget to select a figure in the active animation first. Of course, if that happens, you can easily remedy the situation by choosing the new figure from multiple frames option in the Remove menu. 2. If you find that the Include User Tween switch is disabled, it may be because the active animation already includes user tweens and the number of those tweens does not match that of the project from which the sequence is being selected. 3. And finally, as I demonstrated, Animation Pro will automatically add and or update any clones belonging to a figure being replaced. The way those clones are updated will be based upon their clone settings in the Figure Inspector. In this case, the reflection is not set up to clone the colour or tints of the parent figure items so it hasn't taken on the colours of the figure brought in from the sequence. You may also find that the alignment of clones, with respect to their parent figure, may be affected by the replacement, particularly where the size of the parent figure is modified during the process. I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.